So now we lead into some example questions, and I'm going to work through this with you. We need to learn how to write the formula of the ionic compound given the charge of the ions. And in addition to that, we're going to learn how to name the ionic compounds. So we've got Na plus and Cl minus. And the way that uh, we can learn this best is to write these ions side by side. And we like to use what we call the crisscross method to determine the empirical formula. It's a very simple process. And what I'm going to do is just include a 1 to indicate that these charges are 1 plus and 1 minus. And what we do is we just simply take the number of the charge of one ion and move it to the bottom right of the other ion. So that'll form a subscript for the number of ions. For the Cl1 minus, we're going to take that one and we're going to move it down to the bottom right of Na. And that will tell us the number of sodium ions that would be present. So when we do that, we uh, end up left with we are left with NaCl. So this is the simplest whole number ratio for sodium chloride. And the name, as I've just mentioned, it mentions the metal ion first, sodium, and then the non-metal ion next, which is chloride. It leaves out the names ion or cation or anion, and it just summarizes it by the names, the, the first part of the name of the ions, sodium chloride in this case. Part B, so we're given some different ions, Mg2 plus and S2 minus. So let's do this in the same way. So we've got firstly the metal ion, Mg2 plus, and the metal, sorry, the non-metal ion, S2 minus. We're going to crisscross these. So we're going to take the two here. I'm going to move it down to the bottom right of the sulfide. I'm going to take the two of the sulfide charge and move it to the bottom right of the Mg. So what we initially get is Mg2S2, but this doesn't represent the simplest whole number ratio of these ions. We know that Mg2S2 can be divided by 2, and that means that we can simplify this to MgS. The name of this particular ionic compound Starting off with the metal is magnesium. And then the, the name of the uh, uh, negative ion is sulfide. So this ionic compound is called magnesium sulfide. Third example, we're going to write Li plus first. So the metal ion first, non-metal ion second. Let's crisscross these. So remember that if we don't have a number, it's just equal to 1. So we're going to bring that down to oxygen. We're going to bring that two down to the lithium. We're going to end up with a formula of Li2O1 or just O. And the name of this is lithium. And as you've guessed it, O is oxide. So we've got lithium oxide here. Two more to go. So this next one, Al3 plus and Br minus. So let's go ahead and write these next to each other. And the thing is, when you get the hang of this, uh, you'll realize that you, you don't have to do this as much. You can actually recognize what the formula is uh, quite straight away or quite, uh, quite quickly. So let's move those uh, numbers of the charges down to the bottom right of the other atom or ion. In this specific case, we've got Al1 because Br has one negative charge and Br it's going to be 3, so ALBr3. Again, naming this, just name the metal ion first and the non-metal ion next. So we've got aluminium bromide. Finally, uh, we've got Ca2 plus and N3 minus. Let's go ahead and switch those numbers. So crisscross them over, 2 to the N, 3 to the Ca, and we're left with Ca3. N2, and the name of this is calcium nitride. So far, we've only looked at uh, the ions of the first 20 elements. What we know is that there are ions um, from various other groups, 
um, including the transition metals, which are the D block elements. And what we know is that these transition metals can have ions of variable charge. That means that their ions can be, they can be 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus. It really depends on the actual transition metal itself. But how we distinguish between these different charges is we use Roman numerals and we put those in brackets to indicate the charge of that transition metal. So here we've got a few examples. I love saying this, but you've got the iron 2 ion. And so in this case, iron 2 would be an Fe2+. Plus. The iron 3 ion would be Fe3+, plus because that tells us what the charge is. Chromium can exist as a 3 positive charge. It can also exist as a 6 positive charge. So what we do is we ensure that this uh, naming convention also is retained when we name the ionic compound. And you should be able to work out what the charge of the ion is, given its formula. So we've got some more example questions here. So we've got Fe2 plus and F minus, keeping in mind that iron 2 plus is a transition metal and it can have a variable charge. So let's go ahead and uh, determine the formula first. We'll go ahead and crisscross. Here's our formula, Fe, F2. And then the name is going to be iron. Keep in mind it's a two positive charge, so it's going to be an iron two fluoride. Next example, we've got Pb4 plus and S2 minus, so Pb is lead. This is going to be the lead four ion. So let's go ahead and do this one. I'm going to crisscross them over. And what might you what you might start to see is that if we look at counting the amount of charges, we could easily work out the simplest ratio would need to balance out those charges. So in this case, we've got PB. We can start it off just by crossing them over. But what we realize is that that's not the simplest whole number ratio. So we need to cancel this down. We divide both of those by two, and we end up getting PBS2. To name this, again, we just need to keep in mind that lead is lead four, so it's going to be lead four in Roman numerals, sulfide. The last thing that we're going to consider uh, during this video is about polyatomic ions. And this should have been made apparent to you in previous studies. These are what we can also refer to as molecular ions. And these are just groups of atoms that can carry a formal or a net charge. What we have to do is try and treat these polyatomic ions as single units or single atoms. And when we look at writing the formula of these, it works in exactly the same way. But the only additional point is we need to put this whole group in brackets if we end up with multiple groups um, in the empirical formula. So a few examples we've got here, and these are ones that we would like for you to actually commit to memory. So we've got carbonate, it's a CO3 two negative. So this whole group of atoms carries a two negative charge. You have what we call a hydrogen carbonate, which uh, adds an additional hydrogen with a positive uh, charge to give us HCO3 negative. So this group carries a negative charge. You've got sulfate, sulfites, and so on. And so many of these are things that we will commonly see uh, throughout the course. You will be given a table of ions of some sort. So this one shows you one example. And uh, we're not going to expect you this year to actually know these completely off by heart, but uh, we will eventually get you to actually know a, a range of these or be able to work them out, especially if they are monatomic ions. So let's have a look at how we can solve for these ones. We've got two different ions. One of them is polyatomic. So let's go ahead and write the uh, formulae of the ions first. We still just need to crisscross them over, and we end up getting Na2CO3. The CO3 2 minus ion is called a carbonate, so the name of this is going to be sodium carbonate. So it's just the positive ion first, followed by the negative ion second. The next one, Ca2 plus and NO3 minus. Again, I think by now you guys are getting the hang of this. So cross them over. So this one's going to work out a little bit differently because what we'll see is firstly the calcium 
will uh, be one. Okay, so there's one calcium, but we need two of these NO3 minus groups or two of these nitrate groups. So to show that, what we have to do is put it in brackets. We put the NO3 in brackets, and then we put a two outside the bracket to show that we've got two nitrate groups for every one calcium ion. The name of this is calcium nitrate. And again, positive ion followed by negative ion. Next example, I've introduced two different polyatomic ions. So we'll write them next to each other. Let's cross them over. So we end up getting two lots of the NH4 plus ion. Uh, so this is a, an ammonium ion. So we're going to put this in brackets, NH4 in brackets, and then a two outside the brackets to show we've got two of them. The SO4 two minus, which is a sulfate ion, we only have one of, so we can just write that outside of brackets. And so its name is going to be ammonium sulfate. A couple more. So Al3 plus, OH minus, cross them over. And eventually, like I said, you will get the hang of this and you won't need to do this crossover method. You already learn how to identify what the formula is. So what we end up getting is one Al, but we need three OH minus groups. So we're gonna put the OH in brackets. Remember to leave out the charges because they balance out. And we've got three lots of them. So this will be called aluminium. And an OH minus ion is a hydroxide ion. So it'll be called aluminium hydroxide. And I believe this is the last one. So SN2 plus, PO4 three minus. We've actually got a transition metal here. So this is a tin two ion and a PO4 three minus, which is a phosphate. So let's go ahead and crisscross. We're going to end up with three lots of SN, and we need two lots of PO4. So put that in brackets as such. And when we name this, we also need to keep in mind the transition metal uh, so it can have variable charge. So this is going to be tin, two, phosphate. So that concludes this video on ionic compounds and their formulae. Stay tuned for the next video. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.